over the millennia of time. Every power in the world has tried to hammer down the light, the consciousness, the souls that have been brought down with enlightened messages to impart on the masses, pushed into the corners, when really in the corners is who you should be fearing, the ones that wish to manipulate you through media, through fear, beautiful darlings and welcome to my next channeling heaven today I've got something really special for you I'm so excited about this I've got my I've got my citrine lamp glowing energy into this with this angel aura quartz going through it you can't see that but it's just under your screenshot this is my granddad's Victorian scrying black mirror. So what's going to happen is, I haven't done this ever. This is live exclusive coming from Nikki Allen. I am going to scry in the mirror and see what happens. Okay, it also is a tool for connecting with the divine and bringing um, various I'm going to bring the lighting down, darlings. Better. I'm just listening to my consciousness. So I'm going to have my selenite here. I've got my amethyst behind the citrine. Now, do you want to see the plate? No, okay, fine, fine. There's the plate there anyway. Um, I basically have been told that potential phenomena could take place around my divine chakras, okay? So, um, okay. Sorry, darlings. Um, while this is happening, they're asking me what. They're telling me what angle to have the mirror. They, as in, I haven't got a clue who's telling me at the moment. Okay, so I have got no clue where we're going. No clue who we're going to connect with. And that's the way I like it. Okay, so let's see what happens. Um, the art of scrying mirrors, um, you can do a mirror just with water running down it or even just sit in front of a mirror. But the art of, I love this one. This is back to Victorian times, sexy. Um, this is, by, in the background, by the way, you will hear wind chimes. So my granddad's going to come through because obviously it was his plate. Um, but you just stare through it. Just like those old things in the 90s. Do you remember where you'd stare at a picture? stare past it and then the picture would come out in the dots. It's a bit like that. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Thank you, Julianus. Julianus is present with us today and wishes to address our gathering. The first thing he has shown me is an eye. And I wish to now repeat what he is saying in my, my 
mind. Could you please um, either use my energy here, Julianus, or I can write it out, or I just feel it, whichever way. The reason why we have this eye to show you, Nicola, is it is an endearing way to show that all spirit guides watch you all. We have chosen through various stages of our development and involvement to make a soul contract with you to look after you during a certain time of your life. Of course, you will get to a certain development, developmental stage in your soul ascension where you can have the choice to be that enlightened member who wishes to look out for and adhere to the soul contract given to the human that comes down here. Can you slow down a bit, please? We have lost that connection with many of you. However, the connection that is already acknowledged and embraced by light workers and vessels such as Nicola is heightened. The eye is to show you we see all, we feel your pain, we feel your triumph. We try and guide you every step of the way. As through our learned friends in the celestial realms, the frustration we feel when you block our energies can be almost palpable if we were to name a human word that connects to how we would feel if we had human emotions. Please know that we have a vested interest in looking after you during this incarnation. Every single soul on this planet has or shares a goal, desire to have a certain spirit guide look after them. It is agreed before you come down. We all know that during this time of rebirth, a lot of you would have chosen to forget and be enlightened once again during your lifetime. Or as some, such as Nikki, we are allowing her to be born aware of her presence in this world and her connection to the divine. We love you. We want you to experience the best incarnation during this space. We can work with you for many lifetimes if you choose and vice versa. Once you have reached a certain level of ascension at the top of your astral planes, you can also too elect to look after a soul down here on this planet. Yes, we do share our love and our concerns with other spirit guides that may be brought in for your greater good if the lessons become too hard for you or if we find you are dwindling off of your divine path. The essences, the soul guides that stay with us, are with us or with you for the duration of your incarnation. We assist you whether you are aware of it or not. However, we encourage you to open your energies, listen to what is being brought to you from our portal mediums, to open your energies up so that we can come in and assist you in all of your endeavours. Likewise, you may have a number of souls that incorporate an interest into your spiritual experience down here as a human. So, for instance, if we speak of Nicola, she has Kanunka, who also helps on the healing vibration and to also bring that out to the masses, the vibration of healing. He also inspires her on how to address and speak with the masses and how to help heal their vibrational status down here on the earth plane. Likewise, Catherine has been brought in to help her when she asked on her journey to be more awake of prophecy predictive elements of what humans seem to be so attracted to, especially during this millennia. It's almost an essence of us being an invisible character that you depict down here. Oh, cricket, too many cricket. Okay, so we are the voice of your consciousness. We are the voice of your instincts. We are the voice that helps you to decide something. Lots of you will refer to this as it was on a hunch. Seeing a tree, very huge trunk, many roots, 
we are part of the stability of that trunk in the tree of life that creates your incarnation experiences down here. We help you to fill your roots as below and we help you to grow upwards, aspire and continually grow new branches, blossoms and leaves in your growth, being caressed and nurtured at, from a, as above. Some of you will have one guide, others may have many. However, there will be mainstream guides that come to look after you in this space of evolution in this space of consciousness being risen at a higher rate than ever before that has happened on the earth plane. We will be coming to you on a stronger vibration. For the newer elements of this gathering, that view Nicola, and you are at the beginning of your trials and tribulations of understanding how you can open to our divine networks of sentience and intelligence, I ask that you literally start from the beginning. The word meditation, that is used for you to still your mind for us to reach you. Look at what creates physical blanks. We have already enlightened Nicola on the damage that the pineal gland can come under. Could this in fact be part of your biggest killer, if you like, of physical bodies and minds, dementia. Are we allowing, perhaps, free will, the people in power to supply certain things in their products to close down your awareness, your knowledge? to bring you these conditions so that you no longer remember who you are. You must remember that most dis-ease on this planet is created through what is provided to you by the environment. See, we speak of these things, your towers for communication Hang on a minute, I think he means um, mobile phone towers. I think that's what that means. Hang on. These indeed do bring conditions that lessen your ability to reach us. Less ability to thrive. This is why along the way of us increasing your soul, sentience, understanding and knowledge, we are imparting and dedicating our energy to teaching you, to showing you ways to evade the corruptive elements of your earth that create problems with your health, mind, body, soul. I know that I say that I am calling it your earth as I have been incarnated many times. The pivotal lifetime that I share with Nicola is of course in 1452. I have grown along with Nicola along our journey from being a formidable force to more benevolence, more kindness. As I see that Nicola's energy has changed what I mean to say by this is as your enlightenment, as your emotional structure changes because of your being awake to our energies, we will change the essence of our vibration with you. When I first allowed Nicola to be aware of our relationship, she was in a very brutally angry and strong defensive energy. And interestingly enough, this is how part of my presence came forth. Formidable, intimidating, which I never chose to do. However, this vibrated on a more even kill with Nicola, rather than the benevolent, kind and patient energy that I am now. For if I became too formidable now, and if I became too <laughs> wrath-like, I don't know if that's, okay. 
then I do not feel that Nicola would appreciate this vibration and we wouldn't have such a close relationship that we do now. Honour the colour coming through, Nicola. This is self-love, Chamuel, and self-belief for you. Just for everybody to know, I am now, this, this plate is red hot and I have got, do you know, like a lava lamp of the most biggest cerise and bright pink blobs going through my eyelids, physically I can see them, incredibly. Massive balls of pink in all different shades. And when I blink, it's bright green. Loving it. Healing and love is being brought to Nicola. And we ask that she describes this phenomena so that when you actually see it, when you close your eye structures, you will see the colours and the vibrations that we are bringing you. There is a general collective of love and benevolence that is brought to you in frequencies of energy. We don't stand as one man or one angel. We stand as collective energies which are needed for this new collective time in the age of Aquarius. Number eight is significant to many, and this just finds and this just defines the symbology of infinity and that forever connection between humans that choose to incarnate and their mentors and guides that choose to be affiliated to this incarnation at this time. What I will ask is that many of you now who are being open to listening to channels such as Nicola to be patient with oneself and we will bring ourselves to you and make ourselves known to you when the time is right. We decide when you are mentally and spiritually on the correct vibration for us to introduce us, where you could potentially understand where we first met we can show you previous lives and we can then continue to create a relationship which is more intimate than anything that you'll discover through another human being on this earth plane akin to twin flame. And of course, we acknowledge your split soul energy, which is imparted into animals that bring love, compassion and strength to you. Did this come through? with clarity. I think it did, Julianus. Thank you. Okay, this is a bit weird. Um, he told me to have my eyes and, I, and my thumb is moving on the mirror and there's traces. Random. Let's see what that's about. The reason why you are seeing this phenomenon at the moment, Nicola, is because it is showing you that no matter where you place your physical body, you leave an imprint. We are trying to create a legacy as such that our imprints bring passion of belief, knowledge of the divine to our younger generations. You're responsible for leaving this legacy. It's not by throwing rules. It's not by throwing manipulative ways to encourage your younger ones. It is merely using subtle symbolism and subtle subliminal words and actions for them to be aware, potentially leaving something plain which is of importance to the next generation, showing them the interesting revelations of crystals showing them the interesting revelations of potentially using these cards. The cards I speak of are merely a way of us implementing our intuition into your energy whilst you are quietly shuffling them. This is a way to contact us and allow us to impart our lesson for the day. We don't wish to use the word lesson. However, I cannot think of another word that will incorporate the sessions and the connections we have with you to help you to learn more. Perhaps I should facilitate a more appropriate word because we do not want to make this feel that you are a pupil and have to abide by what is shown. 
we give you options. We give you opportunities. It's up to you and how much you're connected to your inner child, your inner being, your higher self. To whether you make these choices, take these opportunities. And as Nicola has spoken, as we see in her consciousness, she has mentioned the angelic encounters that change a soul and allow walk-ins to take place. She has mentioned these recently. These are becoming more apparent. There are more residual soul energy saps. saps. Don't know if that's the right word. Can you, sacks? Let me just. Okay, he's showing a uh, part of our soul consciousness element, which I talked about in, in soul walkings, that is kept there as a backup if things go really wrong, if you're supposed to stay on the earth plane. Okay, so he's showing that. So um, I feel what he's trying to. We are trying to impart that, that never has there been so many soul, as you call them, walk-ins, where we have had to bring in another part of your pure soul to create the way you look and lead your lives. Please excuse. My nose is itching, my ears are humming. Just please excuse that. It's just his energy. There's breezes wafting through, wafting through here. My nose is incredibly itchy, which sometimes means my dad's about as well. And Julianus, I tend to touch my nose a lot when he's about, don't know why. Um, so please bear with me on that. The element we are trying to create is safety. The element we're trying to create with each individual that we work with is if you come to a canyon, we can show you the bridge across. We are also asking you to take a leap of faith. I do hope that you enjoyed my analogy of keeping close to the wall, the depiction of every ego structure that is created on this matrix planet, the 3D version of what you should be adhering to, learning, listening and abiding by. The sheer drop is your step to freedom. It is indeed no step downwards. It is a step to the rest of your life. Some of you, however, do prefer to walk blind, if you like. Some of you do prefer sometimes to come down and not have a lot of encouragement, support by us. We honour this in your soul contract. Some of you wish to just have this lifetime being blinkered and experiencing the true pain and experiences that a human can go through. This of course includes triumph. This in course includes love and celebrations. And we note that when you come back to the halls of learning and when you reconnect with us after you have reviewed with Jeremiah, you wonder why you chose such a hard path. We crave the experiences. We crave to go through the hardships, the triumphs, the ups, the downs, the yin, the yang. It marks a big notch in our soul evolution. Everything that we experience in our incarnations grows our soul. Everything that you embrace, whether positive or negative, embraces, colours, enlightens your soul cluster family and takes you to higher levels of consciousness. Experience the whole meaning of life is for you to become part of the universe. Yes, there are some that have actually evolved to just become part of the universe, part of one intelligence consciousness that vibrates throughout every planetary system. Some of us, however, still crave to be incarnated in our human cages and stay in this for many, many years to come. And we do reflect on sometimes many, I never chose this incarnation. I never chose to have this existence. Of course, you can't think that when you're down here. But once you are the divine light being that you always were, 
you understand that you did choose it for your own learning. By all means, we are talking that humans have been through some incredible pain and trauma to the soul. It's not always what you have chosen. It is another soul breaching their soul contract. Society, the atmosphere, poisons in the atmosphere, the elements and everything that's around you. Situations in life that they've asked for, but down here the ego structure breaks down and they create hurt and pain. So no, not all of you that have gone through severe trauma have chosen this. You have merely, unfortunately, been exposed to someone that has broached, breached, broken this whole contract and has created atrocity. These are the times when we do, because we have all been human as spirit guides, want to just come and rescue you and take you home. However, your family living here, perhaps closed down to a lot of their memories of being eternal, will see this as another punishment and then we have more sufferance because you have, as you call it there, died. So of course, we try so hard to bring you the comfort. We help you try to heal, but you must try and open to us more for us to reach you on that deeper level of understanding where we can help you find the right path, the right people, the right opportunities to make your life easier if you're finding it exceptionally difficult. And of course, in turn, because we sit in a sublime energy and a frequency of nothing close to trauma or pain, you have to remind us sometimes of what you need if it is financial security, if it's emotional security, if it's a mentor, an earth angel that needs to be brought into your life, if you require a personal angel to bring you more synchronicity, events that allow you to know you're being celestially guarded, ask us. This line of communication goes both ways. By listening to what Nicola is asking you to do, it's not very hard. We're asking you to become the most empty vessel you possibly can so we can impart our knowledge, our advice, our guidance. And we've just seen, as Nicola has done, her tower moment. She adores tower moments now because it, you know, it is a way of us showing that we've tried to implement change and because of your ego, your fear, whatever the circumstance may be, we've changed it for you. Then people ask, will you say that you can't change free will? There is a subclause, shall we call it, that you agree to up in the spirit world. And that agreement is, is if I find myself too far away from my divine path, I give you permission to change it in whatever way you see fit. And you can agree to this prior to incarnation and we will use it wisely, divinely timed and when we know we can no longer bring you back without something dramatically changing in your life. Some may call part of your soul cluster going home a tower moment. It is a shock and it is bereavement and a trauma to the system. But most of this is just a natural cause of them going up. And in turn, when you plan who goes home, you plan for people to come into your life to bring you support. You plan opportunities to come in to give you a different version of events as you're healing. To perhaps take you to a different area of intelligence gathering, if you like, of this planet. Because of the passing of a loved one. Every intricate detail has been implemented in your plan. We have exit strategies. We have a what if strategy. 
we have a trust us this isn't great but we promise you it's going to lead to magnificence and I'm sure Nicola has told you many times through her literature work through her vocalizing her experiences that during those two years two Gregorian years of darkness she realized that sacrifice being a martyr, being angry, thinking that we'd forsaken her, feeling left broken, led to anger, darkness. We couldn't reach her. But you would perceive this as being forsaken, as you felt no connection, you saw nothing, no signs, no synchronicity, no magical happenings. But as soon as she allowed herself to surrender, as soon as she allowed herself to say, come, help me, the miracles began. And sometimes we become quite vexed as to why you feel that only certain people can be open to the phenomena of the divine. Every single soul that is on this planet can be part of the divine consciously you can all order your future you can all enter into the quantum field to create your intentions what you want from the universe what you can attract for your greater good we do sometimes need reminding of the material world you stand in if you need financial help affirm it confirm you need the help and let us work with it but remember, your voices need to be clearer, louder. And this just takes tiny amounts of what you call spiritual development. And of course, at the moment, we have a very high vibration of darker energy. I believe Nick Meow did. Yeah, I've done, yeah, in my consciousness. See, he's saying about um, me doing the Lucifer video, Lucifer is here. It would be very naive of us to think that there was no darker element to our light. And as Nicola has countlessly described, this dark feels under threat. It feels scared, it feels cornered. And so it's reaching out with every possible Thing that it can to the lower energies of this planet the lower souls that choose to not be awake the lower energies that will face their karmic endeavors in our chamber of the cherubim so by keeping yourself high light bright embracing your internal being So he's asking me, like, I'm aware of my internal being, like at the moment, just pal flow. And I know why, because Archangel Raguel is working with me and I just need to clear and balance just a few more bits and I'm done. The clearance year, which I've been told about. And so I embrace it because my soul is attracting it, loving it, wanting that colour because Raguel is with me. Adore it. Mm -hmm. and there are times when we perhaps interfere perhaps when she should be resting we like to implement a conversation with her to be relayed to you beautiful souls what we want to do is be able to tell you how much we love you how much we care how much we endeavor to keep you safe one to one as some of you may be new to this some of you may be perhaps having a religious ego structure, fear structure, perhaps you don't know what to do, how to do it, don't know if it's real, don't know if it's true, question it, analyse it. You may have difficulty with that. And so for the time being, if you wish to listen to someone such as Nicola, do so. Be aware you can have a direct line to the divine whenever you wish. 
you just have to pick the phone up and encourage that line through meditation, nature, whichever way you feel or see fit to allow yourself to be open more to something so incredible, to something that really has been a quiet secret over the millennia of time. Every power in the world has tried to hammer down the light, the consciousness, the souls that have been brought down with enlightened messages to impart on the masses, pushed into the corners, when really in the corners is who you should be fearing, the ones that wish to manipulate you through media, through fear, through their endeavours to make you feel like you are powerless when in fact you're more powerful than any of they, how you describe them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I can see clouds in the top of the plate. These clouds are full of chemicals. They are used to experiment on weather conditions. The initial thought and feeling for these for was for us to improve crops, to make things easier for us to grow things. But as usual, anything that involves any technology is potentially manipulated by darker energies. The atmosphere is also full of blockages. The products you apply to your body and place in your body are also full of blockages. The number one aim of the elites or the people in power is to keep you controlled and powerless so that you are easily guided, moved, controlled. So we ask that you embrace all voices similar to Nicola's that hold integrity, truth, clarity, transparency. For she will guide you via us on how to get through these pollutants and reach the divine. Every single soul that adheres to this and works on themselves will bring more strength and good to the planet. As we cannot reiterate enough, this is the time for the collective to gain power, knowledge and light. We are in a collective realm that will overcome all of the things are, are in ill balance at the moment. Hence why Raguel is working closely with Nicola and Ariel. To be aware of base chakra difficulties, to be aware of planetary difficulties, to be aware of the non-communicative species on this planet, animals, young babies. We're trying to bring awareness. We certainly do not want an upended version of projecting fear, prophecies, world disasters. We want to balance up what we bring to Nicola as we do not want her to turn into a predictive tool machine that we bring in a different element of intelligence that just wants to see what is going to be imparted on the planet next. I hope you understand what I have just said. We are here to bring balance. We're here to bring education to the masses via Nicola. And we are here to teach you on how to reconnect on a stronger level than ever before. As we've said before, in the last I can't think of the word. Um, century. That's right, because he's not, he's saying, he's telling me the date, but I couldn't remember the words. I had to find it. Since 1940, 
we started to integrate more awareness of spirituality in your Victorian times, Gregorian. This is where we had free flow. This is where the mediums that we used could create physical phenomena. The mistake we made here was that others followed suit and created fakery. Again, another way to discredit our workers and our ambassadors. We wanted to implement physical mediumship and the turn of the century from the 1800s to the 1900s to start helping people to wake up their energy. It didn't work very well. We saw the atrocities that took place in 1914. Oh, I can't think of that year. But we started to implement codes, geometry. We started to infiltrate the 3D matrix in the 40s on the second genocides that took place on this planet. Not only the world wars, the killing fields of Cambodia, Tiananmen Square, slaughters of millions of innocent people we have watched. And if we did indeed still have human hearts, they would be breaking as we watch how not only humans, forestry, animals being decimated for what we can't understand. This is why we've sent hybrids in, starseeds from other planets that have more intellect, more intelligence, have a more easier way to telekinetically report back to us on how the energy and vibration is affecting the planet. Yes, indeed, we can confirm that we, working with our brothers, create hybrids. And in essence, we would say Nicola is a hybrid. She has elemental values to herself. She wants, she, oh, I remember, yeah, she wants, incarnated into the sprite energy to be with the forest the land this is why she has such a passion for this now as this was planned so that she would gratefully accept the frequency of archangel ariel loving it so you see many people say how would a god allow this to happen there is no god that makes any plans. There are just celestial and ethereal layers that assist to bring harmony, calm and balance to a planetary system. And this is exactly what we do. Just remember your home is back at source. The reality layer, the crystal palace, whatever human title we have come up with through our portal mediums to give a yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, go back again. Sorry, I lost it. Whatever human title you give it, we need to give you human titles of places. Otherwise, you can't identify light, frequency and sound. So we create human titles for you to understand. The Crystal Palace is certainly not made of bricks or mortar or made of crystal. It is an imagery created that is a point of energy that when a soul connects to the intended point of energy, they enter into that portal, they enter into that system of frequency. So he's just shown me, it's very clever, Julius. Thank you. Oh my God, I love him. Angel. Okay, so... Just, um, he's shown me, just so it's so on the Google map, you're a dot. Right. Do you know when you're on a Google map and, you, and, you've, and you've got to go to a location and there's a line and there's a dot the other end. Right. The the intention, the vibration, the frequency of you thinking of that place. It's a bit like Harry Potter. Do you know that? Incredible. I think she's had so much, you know, channeling. She don't even realise it, JK Rowling, because basically, do you know, they just think where they need to go and they go through the flu. Right. And they and they are poor or whatever they do. Right. 
basically, I can't think of the words now because I'm up there, but basically our intention, so we say the Crystal Palace, it's not an actual place, but it is a be, it is a frequency area that our dot of energy goes to that dot, it goes to that location. That's the power of what we've got. And that's what they don't want us to know about. So then I intend to go and have a cup of tea with my nan or I wanna go and see my babies. I say the reality layer, but it's not actually a place it's a frequency it's a it's an energy that i can jump into and be present there it's real if i want to go to the archangel chambers i'll stand next to them and then if my energy is right and i can get into the portal i will go there if i'm down poorly tired irritable it won't happen i'll just wander off and think of other crap excuse me he <laughs> just shakes his head when i start getting into my neggy mode that's incredible. I, I, that's, a, again, another revelation for me. Thank you, Juliana. Thank you. You've got to remember these connections, you know, are also then bringing me updates and lessons. I'm not, you know, I never even, even thought of that. Portals of energy. Hence how we talk, we speak of, I've got it, Juliana, so we speak of vortex energies portals in a home where suddenly you know lots of mediums report where you, and i've seen them where you go in a house it's like bloody hell you've got piccadilly circus coming here there's a light an opening and the intention of the spirit person is to go there because they can see the light and they're there in your house and then they go oh blimey am i in a structure because i just want to be in this portal i didn't realize i'm in a house you're like oh my god i'm being haunted it's like, no you're not just someone in a portal we need to move the portal or close it down Everything works on portals and vortexes, the lion's gate, everything. People that sacredly you know, close these portals that don't need to be done. It's part of their mission on this earth planet. Some open them and, and encourage them in certain geometric you know, forms. And the thing is, is that it's all on maths, geometry, you know, sacred systems, grids. But I don't go that Thank you. Is that time? Thank you. Someone's just said they've just made Alexa go boom. And that's my, come on, wrap it up because I didn't realise how long I've been doing this. Okay. I want to stay forever. I just bloody love it. You can all do this. This is, this is what I'm so desperate to try that, you know, it's, just, you know, anyway. That's how they, that is how they manifest. That is how they do it. That our portal is the, a dot, a location, and they can jump in it. If it's open and it's fine and it's well maintained, they can jump in and just be in our energy around us, influencing us, telling us where to go, guiding us to take that job, to meet that person, to make the effort to go to that class, to invest in that. It's incredible. That's enlightening and that's incredible. I see how it works. I've never seen that before. I see how it works, Julianus. Corinthians 24. 2, 242. Should I get it now? Shall I read it now? Okay, are you ready for this? Right, so it's 20, I thought, he's, I thought he meant 24, but it's chapter 2, verse 4, okay? And you just pick this out, he would do, because he was a monk. If you didn't know, he was a San Francisco monk from 1452 in Trastevere, Rome, and I was welcomed into there in the house of Mary Magdalena. And, and this is basically saying how much they love us in the letters from St. Paul to the Apostles, which were also letters of prophecy. Just saying, a bit wonky. Look at me, my <laughs> glasses. <laughs> so it says, for out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye shall be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. You couldn't make it up, could you? So basically, he's chosen that tiny little passage from Corinthians, right, to say 
that despite the, the, the grief and anguish and everything that, that you go through, we do feel it with you, but we bring you nothing but love. How incredible is that? Look, I don't know if you'd be able to see it. He just, he does that now and then. He, he does it to prove um, what he's trying to say to us. The, one of the first things he said with the eye that I saw in the plate was, we love you and we're trying to bring as much love as we can. We don't like the fact that you're grieving or you're angry or you're frustrated or things are hard for you. We don't like that. And we do everything we can to bring happiness and love to you. But you've got to meet them halfway. So he's closed the book, so that means it's definitely the end of the session anyway, and I can't believe how long we've been doing this for. But what a lovely way to show it. He always, he does it to back up what he wants to say. So sometimes to just prove his connection or prove his message or what he wants to back up, he gives me a tiny little passage from the Bible. So I thought it was 24, but it's chapter two, verse four. I love that, do you? It just, you know, at the end of the day, the Bible to me, there's lots of things that I have seen and experienced that do refer to stuff in the Old Testament, but a lot of it is translated and been changed, especially like the demon stuff and God knows what. But Yeshua, um, Jesus, whatever you want to call him, God, Allah, Muhammad, it doesn't matter what creed, religion, race you are. It's all about love, love from them, our love to them, our love for each other, our love for ourselves, all that matters. So on that deep, profound note, I thank you, Julianus, for allowing me to be enlightened and be able to sit here humbly as your channel for you to bring messages from the masses. I please ask that the beautiful green rays that are behind me are sent out to all the individuals who have listened and taken part in this beautiful connection today, and that healing is brought to them, and that I help them to give them the courage to reach up to you, connect with their divine guiders, and allow themselves to have a more better state of being down on this earth plane. Thank you, Julianus, for coming with us today, and thank you for imparting all of this knowledge, and thank you for allowing me to be the one to bring it. It never, ever ceases to make me feel beautiful, euphoric. There are no words. So, darlings, thank you for joining me with this one. I know it's a long one. Perhaps have a cup of tea halfway through. Um, but this is what I love about YouTube is that I can sit here as long as possible. If you're willing to listen, to watch, then I'll be here bringing the words to you. So, my darlings, until the next time... Be love. That's all I can say. Take care.